and some of them are easy. The, 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 the kids are not traveling with me there. Uh, we have a tutor who, who uh, does it, and he's a certified teacher who actually was from uh, Nantucket. And uh, one of the reasons he was appealing to us is he would take his students, his, his regular school students, out uh, and they would um, do ecology projects on the beach. And they would, you know, it was con they were constantly using their surroundings. Uh, so even if even if you, you know, the schools break the schools walls down and, and, and move out into the into the yard, as you know, it says like we have in our house, moving out to, 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 to catalog the plants and things like that. You're still doing, I think, the students a great service for them to see that all learning is not encompassed in a book or you know inside you know on a, on a bullet board. So I think that's the big thing. There have been lots of examples of that. Some do, do not so well. The kids have been making a two scale solar system. Uh, at the house, um, <laughs> taking up a lot of space, I have to tell you. Is that right? <laughs> but I mean, like expanding it out from distances, yeah. So, but, but in Mount Vernon, Iowa, I had seen one time uh, four years ago uh, that they, they, the public schools, their middle school had done, and they had you know the sun and then Pluto, which of course is no longer. Four years later, it's a longer planet. <laughs> but Pluto's a mile out from from where the so it is, you know, so you can walk from you know, see how long the distances are from planet to planet, um, uh, which is extraordinary. <coughs> Unfortunately, in the four years, also some of the planets have been stolen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I sent them to Mount Vernon. It wasn't quite the experience I'd hoped it would be. <laughs> but, but but there are these you know communities themselves have done. Uh, have, have, uh, have done things that are, are great educational things. The other thing is, of course, when you, you are a tourist and you, you end up going you know, to Disney World or places like that, that's not what my kids see. You know, they, they see what America really looks like. And I think that also is a, uh, you know, every field trip, let's go to Washington or, you know, I don't know where you all go here, you know, do the Freedom Trail or something, uh, which my kids have also done uh, uh, as part of this year. But, but they also get to see um, Your, your effect, your echo effect, by cross-posting, by linking to other blogs, you know, by, 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 you know, by, Where are lefty blogs? by having, by, by, by having a commute, by, by having communications with, with other blogs, basically. And then it's not just whether somebody hits you or a particular place. Right. You know, you're seeing, you're seeing that, you know, uh, the conversation. And I do totally believe that these reporters sit there and read all the blogs just like we do. And so it, it eventually does bubble up a little bit. Yeah. I, I remember hearing, and it's, it's been some time ago, maybe four or five years ago, um, they did a panel at American University on, uh, on because uh, they have an institute a little bit like that, not, not as esteemed as this, but, uh, but where they do a lot of discussion of, of, uh, of politics, and they were talking about uh, blogging. And unbelievable what the mainstream journalists were saying. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like, you know, there's nobody to fact check these people. And I say, I'm sorry, Jason, what's his name in the New York Times? Judith Miller. I said, these people are fact checking one another all the time. You know? And you you are the ones who you know, but you know, but I think you're right. I think that, that now they're getting a lot of their a lot of their information from here. And and you know, and I've been incredibly proud of, of the of the real journalism that's taking place. One time, uh, John had flown someplace, and, and the question was, or where he got a particular donation for something, I don't know, college for everyone, something where he got it. And they said, well, he flew on this particular plane, and this was the tail number, and this is who the plane belonged to. 
and this is it, it, which belonged to a company that it, it had a lawyer as their as their search, so they couldn't get in New York, couldn't figure that out. But this is where it's usually hangered, and I thought this is like on Free Republic. I thought that is really impressive work, you know, <laughs> that is truly impressive work. Um, but that's the kind of stuff you see. You know, mainstream media doesn't do that stuff. They don't track down those little those little pieces and put together the puzzle and. Uh, you know, and I have to say, Free Republic though it was, they were right. You know, that is, I don't know whose point it was, and they were right about it, and, and they were identifying the people who who, uh, who lived in that area who might be su uh, suspects, and, 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 and they nailed it. It was Bunny Mellon, is who it was. But. <laughs>